The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller. Or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder. Libraries are bundles of code, mostly functions, that you can use to perform specific programming tasks. The Arduino has libraries for driving LCD displays, controlling servos, reading sensors, and pretty much everything you can think of. There are a few different ways you can get Arduino libraries. A lot of libraries can be installed directly from the Arduino IDE's library manager. Other libraries can be downloaded from websites and blogs and installed on your computer. Some websites just post the library code and leave it up to you to save them as library files. In this video, we're going to learn how to install libraries from all of those sources. A lot of useful libraries are installed automatically when you install the Arduino IDE. These are Arduino core libraries. Libraries that have been written by expert Arduino programmers and widely accepted by the Arduino community. When you're looking for a library, search here first. If you can find a core library that fits your needs, it'll be your best bet. Core libraries have the best support and are very reliable. If you click on one of the libraries, it'll be included in your sketch. Including a library simply means that you're making the library code available for use in your sketch. It tells the compiler to include all of the library's code in the compiled sketch. To include a library, we put this line of code at the top of the sketch. Hash include, followed by the name of the library's header file in angle brackets. We'll see what a header file is in the next video, so don't worry about that now. If you're not sure how to include a library, most libraries come with example sketches that show you how to include them. The files for core libraries are stored in the Program Files folder where the Arduino IDE is installed. By default, the Arduino IDE is installed on your C drive in the 34-bit Program Files folder. In the Arduino folder, you'll see another folder called Libraries. This is where all the core library files are located. Third-party libraries are libraries that you can download and install from other sources, like websites or blogs. These libraries get installed on your computer in the Documents folder. In the Windows Documents folder, you'll find an Arduino folder. Open that, and you'll see another folder called Libraries. These are all of the third-party libraries I've downloaded and installed from the Internet. This is a library for connecting seven segment displays. At a minimum, libraries will contain a header file that has a .h extension and a source file with a .cpp extension. We'll learn what these files do in the next video, so don't worry about that now. Some libraries will also have a readme file, which can have information about how to use the functions in the library. They also sometimes have a license file which provides copyright and usage information. Many libraries also have a library.properties file. 
This is the metadata file for the library, which is used to display information about the library in the Arduino IDE's library manager. There's also a keywords.txt file. This file tells the IDE which keyword should have colored text in the sketch. Most libraries will also include a few example sketches, which are stored in the examples folder. There are also a bunch of libraries available in the Arduino Library Manager. This is another good place to find libraries. The Library Manager is part of the Arduino IDE. Navigate to Sketch, Include Library, then Manage Libraries, and you'll see a list of libraries you can install. As you can see, there are thousands of libraries here. You can choose a topic to narrow down the choices. Or you can use the search function to narrow it down even more. To install libraries from the library manager, click on the library you want to install. An install button will appear. Click that and the library will be installed in your computer. When you're searching online for information on setting up a sensor module, you're sure to come across some third-party libraries. Anyone can create and host a third-party library. But I love it when I can find a library written by SparkFun or Adafruit. Their libraries almost always work, and you can trust that the code is well written. When you find a library on a site like Adafruit or SparkFun, it's commonly packaged in a zip file. For example, SparkFun has a library for the ADXL345 accelerometer. SparkFun has some really good tutorials too. Here's a link to download their ADXL345 library. You can see that it's compressed in the zip file. Let me save this to my desktop. Once you have the zip file downloaded to your computer, you can install it through the Arduino IDE. Go to Sketch, Include Library, then Add .zip Library, then find the location where you saved the zip file. Select that. Now the library is installed and ready to be used in your sketches. Third-party libraries are installed in the Arduino Libraries folder in your documents. Sometimes programmers use GitHub to host their library code. GitHub is a code repository and change management website where programmers can post their code for others to download, suggest improvements, and even modify themselves. Adafruit hosts their library for the DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor on GitHub. This is a list of all the folders and files included in the library. In this case, we can download a zip file that contains everything you see here. We want to download the zip file. I'll save it to my desktop. Now we can install it the same way we install any other library that's packaged in the zip file. In the IDE, go to Sketch, Include Library, then Add Zip Library.
and the zip file will be installed as a library. Now, third-party code isn't always packaged in a zip file, so we have to save the files manually. Take a look at this DHT11 library from Rob Tillart, which is hosted on GitHub. There's no option to download a zip file. The main library files are the .cpp and .h files. So we're gonna need to copy the code from them and save them to new files. Let's start by creating a new folder for the library in the Arduino Libraries folder. I'll name it dhtlib. Now let's go back to GitHub and get the .cpp file. This is the code for the .cpp source file. We need to select all this code. Then copy it. Now we need to paste it into a text editor. You can use a code editor if you want, but I'm just going to use Notepad. Now we need to save this in the dhtlib folder we just created. We need to save it with the same file name as it appears in GitHub. And it needs a .cpp extension. So dht.cpp. Okay, now we need to get the .h header file. This is the code for the header file. We need to copy all of this and save it to another file. We can use Notepad to save this too. It needs to be saved in the dhtlib folder too. With the same name as it appears in GitHub and a .h extension. So dht.h. The .cpp and .h files are really all you need for the library to work. But you might also want to save the keywords.txt file and some of the example sketches too. Just save them to the same folder you save the source and header files in. And name them the same way they're named in GitHub. In this video, we learned how to install libraries that other people have written. In the next video, we're going to learn how libraries work, and even how to write your own libraries. SunFounder is my go-to source for sensors, modules, and other parts for the Arduino and Raspberry Pi. They have a huge selection of STEM, robotics, and IoT kits, and lots of useful sensors and modules. Every product has an online tutorial with wiring diagrams and example code. They also offer free shipping on all orders, with no minimum. Give them a try at www.sunfounder.com next time you need to order some parts.